Alright, time for a video on coefficient of variation. All the other videos in the series up on zstatistics.com. But let's rip straight into this one because I feel like this will be quite a quick little video here. We're going to deal with the definition of coefficient of variation and we're also going to have a look at why we need it. Which I think tends to be left off a lot of the other explanations I've seen around. But it's fairly straightforward. All it is, is the standard deviation divided by the sample mean. So it's really a derivative of two other statistical measures, right? And we've dealt with both of those before in this series. So here's the clearest example I could think of that really shows the importance of the coefficient of variation. Say we've got two different data sets, very simple ones. Here's our data set X, 1, 2, 3, and our data set Y, 101, 102, and 103. Now the first thing we might want to do is calculate the mean of each of these two data sets. And this is fairly trivial, right? The mean for X happens to be 2. You can just see that visually. The mean for Y is going to be 102. Again, really straightforward. Now the standard deviation of this X data set is going to be 1, but it's also going to be the same in this Y data set. Now, leaving the calculation of the standard deviation aside, because we've done that in a previous video, you can see that all Y is, is the X distribution just shifted up 100 points. So in terms of the spread of each of these two data sets, they have to be the same, right? But is that really the full story of the spread of each of these two data sets? What happens if you think about it this way? Have a look at data set X again. You can see that within data set X, we have an observation here, this three, which is in fact three times one of the other observations. So in terms of the scale of this X data set, this varies quite a lot, right? It triples from the smallest to the largest value. The same can't be said for Y. In terms of the scale of this Y data set, 103 is only fractionally higher than 101. So we need some other measure of variation that'll take the scale of the data set into account. And that's where the coefficient of variation comes into it. So the coefficient of variation for X will be S over X bar. And so we're going to get 0.5. And the coefficient of variation for Y is going to be 1 on 102. And in this case, the coefficient of variation shows a much larger figure for the X data set than it does for Y. So essentially all it's doing is putting the standard deviation into the scale of the data set. You're essentially scaling it by the sample mean. So it does show you something different than the standard deviation itself, right? The standard deviation is in absolute terms, whereas the coefficient of variation is in proportionate terms. Proportionate to what? The sample mean. So where would this actually come up in reality? Are there examples where we'd need the coefficient of variation? Well, check this out. I've got a question here that says fuel prices per gallon were surveyed every week for five weeks in the US and in Vietnam. Now let's try to figure out which country experiences the greatest fuel price fluctuations. So here are the two data sets and here are the five fuel prices sampled in the US and here are the five fuel prices sampled in Vietnam. Now quite clearly there's a, an exchange rate issue here, right? The Vietnamese prices are in Vietnamese dong and the US prices are in dollars. And Vietnamese dong are one of those currencies, I think, that have, I think the lowest denomination is a thousand. So you're always going to have a couple of extra zeros on the end of any functional amount of money. So if we were just to straight compare the means, 2.81 for USA and 12,384 for Vietnam, and standard deviations, which happens to be 0.16 for USA, and 638.1 if 
you just looked at those standard deviations, you'd think that fuel prices in Vietnam have a, s a much higher variation than fuel prices in the USA. But of course, it's to do with the scale of the data set itself. Hence why, if we're calculating the coefficient of variation, we take the standard deviation divided by the mean, and we get 0.057 for USA. There's our standard deviation and mean for Vietnam, and we get 0.052 for Vietnam. So in this case, it seems that fuel prices in the USA vary more or fluctuate more than fuel prices in Vietnam, or at least they do in this sample. So that's a clear example of where the coefficient of variation is quite useful to us. And my challenge question extends that a little bit. I just want to see what you can come up with here. In what other scenarios would the coefficient of variation be more appropriate than the standard deviation? And this is my friend Elise that I'm putting in a lot of these videos. She's asking the tough questions. And if you can think of an answer, put it in the comments of the video and we'll see if we can start a little discussion. There's going to be plenty of scenarios where the coefficient of variation is quite useful. And I'm keen on seeing what they are. I'm sure I'll be surprised as well. That'll do us for this video. All the others, as I said, are up on zstatistics.com. And if you like them, why don't you subscribe to the channel? Then you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing. And then if I see you at the pub, I'll buy you a non-alcoholic beer. We keep things straight edge here at Z Statistics. I'll see you around.